Oh my god, that word cinematic, guys, it's something, right? Some people love it, some people hate it. The problem is that that word cinematic can mean a bunch of different things and everybody has a different opinion. But that's fine and I love it. I love hearing those different opinions. And more importantly, I love the fact that today anyone with a camera can try and make their videos look like a movie. Because that's what I think cinematic means. It's so much fun, right? Now, color grading is just a small part of what makes a video video cinematic. Always remember that. There's so much more you need to pay attention to and do before you can call your video cinematic. But today we're gonna talk about cinematic color grading in DaVinci Resolve. LUTs versus plugins versus grad... grad... manually grading. Not gradually mailing or something like that. Grad manually grading. What works best for a content creator and what are the pros and cons? But before we jump into it guys, thank you all for being here again, thanks for watching, thanks for the support, it's awesome and if it's your first time here, maybe consider subscribing too because I got a lot more content coming, so there you go. Since the beginning of this year, I've also been trying to make my videos feel cinematic and that's the key here. Not necessarily look cinematic, but feel cinematic because just throwing on a cinematic LUT won't do much if your footage isn't good in the first place. Light, story, composition, you know it by now, right? I keep repeating myself, but it's important. Light, composition, story. Of course, that doesn't mean that color grading isn't important, because it is. It's what people see in the first seconds before they even know what your video is about and I've been playing around with color grading in DaVinci Resolve a lot and I've also learned a lot. One of the important things I've learned is that 8-bit footage like out of my Canon M50 is really difficult to color grade even if you use a flat color profile. It's possible, but it's really difficult. You really have to be careful not to mess up your footage. I've messed it up quite a few times, but hey, I've learned something every time I messed up, so it's okay. Another thing I've learned is that we all have different expectations and we're all different. Making videos for YouTube is totally different from making client videos or a short film. And that's why I want to talk about these different color grading techniques, LUTs, manual grading and plugins. Because none of these techniques are bad, they're just different and I have a favorite because of what kind of filmmaker I am, content creator. Let's be honest, this is the best way to do it, but there's a problem. It's difficult and it takes a long time to learn. You can easily learn the basics in a few weeks, but if you want to color grade like a pro, it's gonna take a long, long time. That's also why it's a separate profession. When they make a movie in Hollywood, it's not the editor who does the color grading, they have a colorist for that. But here on YouTube, we have to do it all ourselves. Now, if you want to learn color grading, DaVinci Resolve is great. It's used by a ton of professionals, so you're good with DaVinci if you want to learn it. The results will be incredible if you do it right. But it takes time, even if you know how to do it. And I'm also not a cinematographer who makes movies where the production time is months or even years. I put out content a few times a week, that's what I do, that's what I like to do. But that means that I don't have the time to color grade manually. I can make my log footage look natural now, that's something I can do manually. You know, make it look like the standard profile of your camera. But to create a look, a cinematic look or a creative look that also looks good, that's just not possible 3 times a week with all kinds of different footage. So even though in between I try to learn how to do it manually because I do think it's the best way, it's just not possible for me as a content creator. A lot of people look down on LUTs, like it's something for amateurs, but I don't think that's true. I color grade all of these videos with one of the LUTs in my LUT pack and I think it looks great. Now, the problem with LUTs is, and everyone has done this, so you see a video on YouTube, you love how it looks, and then the girl or the guy has a LUT pack. You buy it, you download it, and you try it out, and it looks like poop. That's normal because everyone that creates LUTs creates them for their camera. And colors are different in every camera, especially skin tones. 
Canon, Fuji, Sony, all looks different. So if you want to buy LUTs, which is totally fine, I've bought LUTs plenty of times from other YouTubers to support them, but also because I like the look. But never have I bought a LUT that I could throw on and it looks good. You always have to tweak it a little bit. So if you want to buy my LUTs, which I would appreciate, of course, the best way to use them is to drop them on your footage and then dial it down to 10 or 20%, something like that, and go from there. Then increase it step by step until it looks what you want it to look like until you like what you see and also don't stick with what the LUT does sometimes you have to increase the contrast manually a little bit play around a little bit with the curves you know so that's what you always have to remember to avoid disappointment and then when you've tweaked the LUT to your liking save that look as a new LUT because that's gonna be your LUT that works on your footage. You know what I mean? And finally, I also like to use LUTs on the same type of footage, when I know that dropping that LUT on the footage will give me the exact look I want. I've created this LUT for my studio footage, so I know when I drop this LUT on my talking head videos, it will look exactly the same every time. But if I would use this LUT on outdoor footage, I'll probably have to tweak it again. Let's see what it looks like. Not too bad, I guess, but yeah, it needs some tweaking. This is my favorite way of color grading because it gives me both the advantages of LUTs and manually grading. I can color grade different types of footage fast, but also get a good look consistently, and that's really important. A plugin, a good plugin, allows you to control a bunch of different settings manually, but it's just easier to do. My favorite at the moment is Film Convert Nitrate. This advantage, it's quite expensive, but so far, for me, what I'm using it for, it's totally worth the money. And by the way, I have no connection with them whatsoever, I just tried the plugin, liked it, and bought it. So, instead of dropping a lot on your footage, in DaVinci Resolve, you drop a new open effects node on your footage, and then you'll see all of the controls that you need to tweak the footage. And it's a lot faster than using the color wheels, the curves, and all those things. Because it gives me a consistently good look every time I use it. It's just a matter of getting the contrast and the white balance right, and sometimes I also adjust the skin tones a little bit, depending on the footage. That, of course, I have to do manually, and it depends on the project I'm working on. So actually what I'm doing then is using a plugin combined with some basic manual grading. It just works for me, and it's an easy way to get a nice cinematic look fast. Of course, I don't know what cinematic means for you, so maybe this is not it. Like I've said, that word cinematic means something different for everyone. But that's also the fun of it. Make sure to always first pay attention to light, story, composition, those things. Color grading is just a layer that comes on top of all that. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you've learned something. If you have, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.